I couldn't locate them. So I'm picturing that they're going to be in a cave dead. There are just phones ringing everywhere. The police, Ambos, Surfcom, everything's going on. OK, just stay on the phone for me if that's all right. Yeah. For all this to be happening, this has got to be proper. Harry spots the divers being washed over rocks. Go, 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 go. Come down, give me a hand. The ocean owned them. There's nothing they could do. When we get big waves here at Bondi, the rips pull so hard, it turns into a real dangerous beach. And on this particular day, I was out in the big waves and I look across at the rock shelf and I notice two scuba divers. Conditions are deadly enough for swimmers, but divers, strapped with tanks and equipment, are destined for disaster. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I knew I had to do something. I was screaming at it. Get off, get off, climb up the rock. Quick, 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 quick. Go, 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 go. In front of Harry's, the two divers are hit by a giant wave. It threw them so hard into the back of the rock face that I heard the scuba diving tanks go ping. Harry's can't see the divers who have disappeared in the white water. Without a radio, he is unable to communicate the emergency back to the tower. I was screaming up at the rocky shelf above, call the lifeguards, call the police. I knew if we got a triple zero call, that it'd get back to the lifeguards too. Hello? Something's happened on the rocks, Harry. Just call someone to get the lifeguards down there. North Bondi? Yeah, North Bondi. Harry's just found his cell on the rocks. We had no idea what was going on. We didn't know if it was in the water, if it was on the land, if it was a resource, if someone had been rescued. We just had no idea what was going on. For Harry's now, I can't see anything. Okay, was he hurt or was it sort of someone else, do you think? Hang on. There were just phones ringing everywhere. The police, Ambos, Surfcom, everything's going on. OK, just stay on the phone for me if that's all right. Yeah. For all this to be happening, this has got to be proper. Harry spots the divers being washed over rocks. Go, 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 go. Come down, give me a hand. The ocean owned them. There's nothing they could do. As the massive wave recedes, there's no sign of the two scuba divers. I knew I had to get into the boat ramp myself. And in that time, I couldn't locate them. So I'm picturing that they're going to be in a cave dead. Harry's is the only lifeguard who knows the last location of the two divers. We could see a rescue board tucked up against the boat ramp. That's when I, I got in the buggy, got the defib in there, and I drove along the road at around the houses. Harrison heads to another access point. I saw two guys sitting there in wetsuits and dive tanks and two cops just interviewing them. <laughs> After trying their luck entering the surf on one of the biggest days of the season, the two divers are lucky to be alive. What are you doing scuba diving today? Just checking it out, man. My eyes were just going from them to the 10-foot surf and rocks, back to them, then back to the 10-foot surf and rocks, and my brain just couldn't piece it together what I was actually seeing. A big set comes in, knocks Colin over, and the lifeguard is like, get out, get out, get out. And then we start turning around, another wave comes, knocks me over, and then by then, we're pretty much just like, like face planning against the rock. Harry's finally makes it ashore. You know, I had this immense amount of frustration and anger in me, thinking how could they have done this to themselves? And then there was a sign of relief that, you know, they are alive and they're out of harm's way. That's 20 years working down here, and I've never seen that. There's was, was like the situation you two are in. I've lost my voice from screaming. And I, like I seen that 10 foot wave hit you guys. It's just like a pinball whew, across the rocks. And I, like I know how easy it is to lose a life. And, that, that's as close as you're going to get. The incident has cost emergency services thousands of dollars. I can't even begin to comprehend what they were thinking. Let alone if those guys got in the water, they wouldn't have come out alive. 
there's so much water moving, you wouldn't even be able to see your hand in front of your face, let alone being able to see Dory or Nemo or... What's Nemo? Bruce. That? Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple of heads in that north corner, I I'll come up to see right against the side. Two people are being swept out in the torrent of water just off the rocks. You compare it to grand final day for a lifeguard. You know, you do the training during the week, try and keep fit, you go for paddles. Then when that style comes, you have to do a rescue, you kind of have to put all that training into practice. Yeah, you'll have to go out. Corey paddles past the first swimmer and heads for a woman further out. There's one more head out there, but... I thought they had a board. There's one more head deep in the corner. As Corey approaches the swimmer... How many times? ..he gets a surprising response. The woman is unaware that she would likely have drowned if left to swim back against the rip on her own. Boys, I think I'm out here as well. He's obviously seen something that oh, went up. It's gone. It was so much water moving, and even though I had flippers on, there was just there was no power against that rip. It was just charging out. Oh, Corey nailed it. He nailed that one. All the way. Passing Corey on the way out... He looks knackered. Harrison gets to the second swimmer. He must catch a smaller wave before he's cleaned up by the monster sets coming around the point. Oh, they're on one now. Yeah! Oh, master. The guy that I had to take back to shore was, you know, a fit-looking bloke, had flippers on. He still found it hard, so it goes to show you, you know, if you had someone that had no ocean experience and couldn't swim a stroke, it's the risk before disaster for sure. That was borderline. I didn't want to push it. You've got to have respect for the surf. I think that's the key. Know your limits. It's pretty powerful out there today. It takes about two seconds to get out, maybe two hours to get in. There's no room for pride out there. Yeah, this is front. Hey, buddy, come straight back for sure. If you're long enough now, you can rip. Tommy does everything he can to direct the man and avoid a rescue situation. Stop going sideways into the rip, jeez. But his warnings go unheeded. This guy's trying to die. What can go wrong if it's that big is so much more than normally, like... Days this big, like I could die. In the brief moments Tommy takes to paddle out, the man is sucked out towards the huge swell. So, yeah, I was very stern on get on the board and let's go. We've got to get out of here. They've got the tongue to get on the board. He's going to get sucked back out. So the north rip, when the waves are, you know, over eight feet, it starts to pull. It's like a river mouth that's just, it's full on. The rip charges out to sea at five metres per second, double the speed of an Olympic swimmer. Just got to get across to the sandbank and get washed in as fast as possible. I don't want to be playing around in the rip, getting taken out. Look how fast he's going back out to sea. Central to the north, he's going back with pretty quick, didn't he? Tell me. <laughs> Tommy has three options. Paddle south and try to catch a wave in the impact zone. Go north up the rocks, or aim straight at the beach and use brute strength against the rip. The lifeguard has their own way of doing things. I'm going to do the rescue different to what Tommy's going to do. I'm not going to try and paddle against the rip because you're just going to get sucked further and further out. Before long, the rip will pull Tommy and the man out into open water and into the full might of the impact zone. Just avoid sitting in the impact zone was... That was plan A. Plan B was... Yeah. 
No, I didn't really have one, actually. Let's go straight across, mate. Finally, Tommy paddles away from the centre of the rip to the edge of the impact zone. This should be all right now. Eventually, we got a little wave all the way up the beach, so pretty happy with that as a success. So hats off to Tommy. It was most probably the hardest way to get the patient in, but he got the job done. Ahmed is a science teacher from Saudi Arabia. There's little doubt amongst lifeguards that without assistance, he would have drowned. But Ahmed has formed a different view. <laughs> Were you in trouble? Mm, no, no, I am. I am swimming, come on. But the ocean, it's very hard. <laughs> that just shows how oblivious he is to the threat of the ocean. He thinks he is fine. It's this big. He wouldn't have even known the danger he was in until he has a solid wave hold him under and he's dead. He is angry. Why? I don't know. Uh, is he a work here? Yeah, no, bro. Thanks. Thanks so much. <laughs>